hit the decision, Tony Beats, also known as the king of the Kondu, had to make in the most recent developments of gold. Rush season 14 could have a profound impact on his family's mining business. It came down to either moving the entire family operation to Indian River or continuing operations in Paradise Hill, a move motivated by the possibility of greater profits. Tony was given a, a difficult decision-making process by the president despite the fact that the supercut test pan showed promising gold content. Tony decided to move to Indian. River, but it looks like the setup process will take a long time. The camp looks chaotic with water leaks and extensive damage from the lack of maintenance during their absence, which made the situation worse. Additionally, the wash plant is in disrepair. Unfortunately, Kevin Beats won't be available this season to help with these issues. Despite the difficulties, he has opted to stay at home and grow vegetables. Rather than address these pressing problems, Tommy has chosen his course of action. Tony Beatstidge, also known as the Viking, Stitch has made a comeback and is a main stage on the reality TV show Gold Rush. Tony Beats' operations in the Klum region of Yukon, Canada, rely heavily on this specially constructed antique mining dredge. It serves as a sizable floating mining machine positioned on a pond. Effectively, the dredge drag lines are used extensively in place of mining a method of extracting valuable minerals from loose unconsolidated deposits of gold that are found beneath the surface of the water by carefully sorting through dirt and gravel during the fifth season of the show Tim Beats acquired. Ownership of the Viking dredge, he and his crew devoted a significant amount of time and energy to restoring and maintaining the dredge. Guaranteeing its operating status, Tony's mechanical know-how was essential in restoring the dredge to optimal function and condition, which greatly increased his capacity for gold mining. According to Gold Rush narrator, Tony made a risky investment in 2014, spending $1 million on a 75-year-old bucket line gold dredge. He hoped that this acquisition would revolutionize his mining operation as every Viking needs a ship that is mine. The Viking dredge has come to symbolize Tony Beats' mining proficiency and unweaving determination on Gold Rush. It has been featured across multiple seasons illustrating the trials and, and triumphs associated with operating such a massive piece of mining machinery in the untamed Condor wilderness. He stated on the program that although this kind of dredge hadn't been used since the 1980s, it had an impressive legacy in 1939 alone. The massive machines dredged 1 million ounces of Kundit gold, which is currently valued $1.8 billion. Tony and his team transported viewers back in time by carefully moving the 350-ton machine to a new location over the course of six months. They disassembled the machine and painstakingly reassembled it at its new site, accomplishing the feat. Tony's daring move paid off, he realized. A 60% profit with the dredge, a staggering 40% more than what he earned from his other wash plants. Over the course of five years, Tony managed to yield a return of $7 million worth of gold from the dredge, as described by the narrator despite skepticism, and everyone thinking I was crazy, and that it couldn't get done by 2016 greetings to all. And welcome back to my Gold Rush official channel, I hope that everyone is enjoying their day. Before we begin, kindly click the subscribe button and give this video a positive rating. Tony Beats, a legendary character in the gold mining industry, has made a choice in the heart of the Yukon, where the rugged landscape hides the secrets of enormous wealth that would change the course of his legacy. Forever, when Tony Beats announced that he had decided to move the mining operation to Indian River, he opened the door for an exciting new chapter in the history of the gold rush. Tommy Beats is well known for his tenacity and unwavering determination. He set out on a quest that would test the limits of what was possible and change the landscape of gold mining. Tony Beats had established a name for himself in the mining sector. Over the course of many years, thanks to his unrivaled work ethic and unrelenting pursuit of achievement, me beats had never been one to shy away from a challenge from his humble origins in the Netherlands to his ascent to become one of the most powerful miners in Yukon. He 
had never been one to back down from a hard task on the other hand as the years went by and the gold got more precious. He became aware that in order to maintain his competitive advantage he would need to think creatively and outside the box the decision to relocate. The mining operation to Indian River was not done without much thought or consideration it constituted a dramatic shift from the familiar landscape of the Kondu, which was the location where Tony Beats had established his company from the ground up, however, Tony was not the type of person to let fear or uncertainty restrain him. It was an Indian River that he recognized the possibility of expansion, the possibility of accessing previously undiscovered gold riches and the opportunity to realize the full potential of his mining enterprise as the mining community began to make preparations for the move. Enthusiasm began to spread across the community. Tony Beat's team was motivated to work harder and faster than they ever had before because they were excited, excited about the possibility of being wealthy in a new region. This possibility stoked a fire in their hearts in the Yukon wilderness they set out to to capture Indian River and stake their claim to the rich tapestry of the Yukon wilderness, although Tommy was the one who guided them on this trip, there would be plenty of challenges along the way. The crew persevered despite the numerous obstacles presented by the Indian River region such as treacherous terrain and unpredictable weather patterns. Because of Tony Beats's inspirational leadership, Tony was able to sustain their dedication and keep their spirits high because the prospect of gold shining just beyond the horizon was enough to spur them on Tony Beat's vision began to take shape as the mining operation on. The banks of the Indian River took shape. These efforts were rewarded with gold. Nuggets that glistened in the sunlight as the group continued to dig fresh. Treasures hidden deep within the soil. Each day that went by the crew discovered additional treasures which was a sight to behold and a testament to. The power of perseverance, however, Tony Beat knew that in order to succeed in Indian River, he would need to do more than just put in a lot of effort and be driven. He would need to be creative, adaptable, and willing to accept change. As a necessary component, one of the most significant innovations made by Beats was the use of dredges to extract gold from the river with the help of these massive machines which could process hundreds of cubic yards of material per our Tommy Beats and his crew were able to access reserves that were previously thought to be unreachable. This revolutionized the way gold was mined in the Indian River and propelled the mining operation to previously unheard of levels of prosperity. Tony Beats, however, had aspirations that went beyond simply making the most money for himself and the generations of miners who would come after him with this in mind, he made environmental stewardship a top priority and implemented strict reclamation operations to lessen the negative impact that mining activities had on the pristine wilderness that surrounded Indian River. This dedication was born out of a deep regard for the land and a strong desire to ensure that its natural beauty is preserved for future generations, even though Indian River is in the middle of the Yukon wilderness, Tony Beat's investment paid off handsomely as the seasons passed and the gold kept flowing the mining industry, expanded and became a bright example of economic success. But for Tony, the greatest testament to his success was not the quantity of gold extracted or the money amassed, but rather the realization that he had the guts to pursue his big dreams and forge his own. Round in the mining industry, Tony Beat's decision to move the mining operation to Indian River was more than just a business decision. It was a demonstration of the power that can be achieved through desire, tenacity, and the unrelenting pursuit of greatness. Tony not only beats the place of employment when he looks out over the bustling mining business on the banks of the Indian River today,
but he also sees a symbol of his unyielding willpower and unyielding spirit as Lul's gold is still to be found in the Yukon wilderness, Tony. Beats will be the one to spearhead the expedition and set the path for later generations of miners to follow in his footsteps. Thanks for watching my video.